everyone this is elizabeth and i am excited to be here with the crescent creation channel today my usual time slot thursday at 3 p.m however i do need to announce that next thursday um my kids have state testing so i'm gonna push my live to 5 p.m eastern that is only for next thursday the next Thursday. <laughs> um, but then I'll be back to my 3 p.m. Eastern lives. I just want to make sure that I'm going to be home in time for the live because I don't know how long their state testing is going to take. But yeah, they both have state testing. So next week will be at 5 p.m. Eastern. And hopefully I'll remember to say that again. Hello, hello, my lovelies in the chat. Thank you so much for joining me today. Maureen, Shay, Lisa, how are you lovely ladies? <sighs> Ms. Pam, if you guys know her, she is PJB Stamper. She's, <laughs> she's such a great subby. She won't be, she probably won't be here today. They're having, <laughs> they're having some uh, power issues. She said that the um, power company said, go ahead and dig. So the company is digging and ran into some power lines. So they are fixing her power right now. So she doesn't have very good internet connection. But uh, <laughs> was sending her quick fixes, quick fixes. Hello, Miss Lisa. Lovely waving everybody's got going on. So this card it might take a little bit extra, but then again, it might not. Uh, I don't do a run through on my cards. I literally think, what do I want to do? And then I pull out the stuff a few minutes before we go live and I make the stuff. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to use up some digitals that I had printed. I don't know if I'm going to use the eggs, but I definitely want to use these two little secrety critters this one is from the crescent creation digital stamp set called easter easter i think it's just plain easter digital stamp set and then this one this <laughs> cute little skunk is from the stinking cute digital stamp set and because they have a nice white center fill and a clear background you can overlap them and so you won't see like the little hand through the head right there so that's what I did I've got it like whispering little secrets to each other and giggling about it but what I wanted to do was put them this is the Simon Hurley newest stamping foam there are three of these available on the Crescent Creation sh website and what I wanted to do was do a stamping, but leave it empty in the middle for the heart shape so that I could put, when I cut these out, it's going to set right on top. So the, the bunny ears will be coming out of the heart and the little foots will be coming out of the heart. But then I can highlight the heart shape with some either lunar paste or something shiny, a metallic pen or something. Oh no, oh no. I noticed Elizabeth, but you are a natural pro. I'm a natural pro at what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the last minute thing, of course. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> do much better under pressure and let's get it done last minute, which is really bad because sometimes it's a little too last minute, but yeah. Okay, so that's what I want to do. And I want to use the stamping foam with these beautiful flowers. And I've done this before. Um, I don't know if we did it here, but I've probably done it on my channel. You can look for me. Okay, it says I have new comments, but it won't go down. And I can't see. Okay, let's try this again. Let's like the video. Let's go to there and let's go to live chatty chat. No, there's no, no, no comments. Alrighty. Um, here, 
the stamping will give you the solid lines. When we use the stamping foam, it's going to be in reverse. So all the white area is going to get filled in with the color. Okay, and that's what I'm looking for. I want to do a reverse image of these flowers. And then I'm going to stamp them on the Crescent Creation yellow sapphire paper. And, okay, it's not paper. It's cardstock. And it's not, like, flimsy whimsy cardstock either. I mean, this holds, holds so nicely. I mean, look at that. It just, it's a nice, heavy cardstock. Honestly, do not know the pound. Um, I feel it might be about 65 or more. Definitely a higher quality thickness on their cardstock. And because it is a higher quality, let me just show you a full sheet of it. Okay, you, you can hold it in the corner and you can see... The weight of it pulls it down a little bit, but uh, let's see if we can't get, you know, well, you'll have to do this. You'll get two sheets of paper, and if you hold them right on the edge and let them flop, you'll notice that, like, copy paper, like, bends a lot. Heavy, the heavier it is, the straighter it sets, and this one's a pretty, pretty good quality. And because of that, I like them as a card base, okay? So we can totally do a one stamping feature right on the card base and uh, make a beautiful card. So I can get two card bases out of one sheet, cut it down the center, four and a quarter, or you can cut it down the other center at uh, five and a half and then fold either way. You can get two a size cards out of there. Let me pull this out of the way. Let's get our stampin' foam, because we're not gonna ink this. We're gonna heat this and grab the image off of this. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on my heat tool. When you're heating with a heat tool, um, some hair dryers, a very, very rare few hair dryers, will be hot enough to heat the foam. Um, if you have the Ranger heat tool, which looks more like a hairdryer, but the heat is way more hotter, you can, this will heat up quicker. Um, if you have just a small area of heat coming out, it's gonna take a little bit. Um, do not heat it like this don't be touching the metal parts to the the foam it will melt and don't just leave it sit there we're gonna try and warm it up so you're gonna want to move your your tool across the um, surface as quickly as possible and then the other trick is to flip it and add that pressure which i need my little pressure tool Everybody's got one, you know, a, a cutting plate of some sort. Give it some even pressure, and then it'll pick up the design. So let's go ahead and evenly heat this. Okay, so got it down. I'm going to give it 
some even pressure. Donna Long, hello, hello. Thanks for joining us. And if you have to, you can just give a little stand up and just give a little bit of pressure. Um, ba -ba -ba -boom. All right, let's see how we did. Uh, this one is not fabulous. Um, this part is okay where we can see some lines in there. It doesn't have to be deep. Honest to goodness, you don't need a lot. But up in this corner is like nothing. So I'm going to reheat and review. Smooshing it down like this for a second. Then our little plate. Ouch. Elbow. Elbow. Okay. So. <laughs> that might be okay. I'm going to do a test stamping it just in case because I don't really want to ruin my fabulous yellow cardstock right away so what I'm going to do is ink this up in the colors I want to use and no 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 we're gonna go we're gonna go oranges oranges and a touch of red Okay, so what I'm going to do, go red, orange, lighter, orange, light, orange, so yellow. We're going to start with the lightest color, and we're just going to rub that in there. Okay. take my yellow blender brush and I'm going to start at the bottom and just where those lines meet kind of work them together a little bit if I see some lines I don't like I can definitely work them out do some blending it's fabulous oh I think that's going to be so pretty okay so we're gonna I like you can definitely ink and grab, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. However, when you give a little mist, it does change it a little bit, and I like that little bit of change. So we're gonna do a light misting, okay? And I should probably do it the other way around. So we're gonna put that there. And we're going to put that right in there. And I've got a little wiggle room. My paper, well, no, I lied. Because my other, I need to be pretty decent with that one. That's okay. I think it'll be fabulous. Even if I miss a little. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. So I'm not even going to clean this stamp. 
stamping foam. Okay, I'm not going to clean that. I'm going to clean that. What I'm going to do is just add the more ink in there and do it again right on my card because it's going to be beautiful. And we'll have a nice yellow center versus the uh, white. Okay, so let's ink this up again right at the bottom with their yellow. Our mid orange, our orangey orange, and then our red. Now you can do this with two colors. You could do this all one color. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can do like multiple colors. You could do reds and blues and oranges all together. Nobody said you couldn't. And, oops. Just fling stuff all over the place. I want that a little bit darker. So we're going to add a little bit more color. That's going to be even brighter and more beautiful. And if you worry about getting ink on any of your things, just wipe it off. Promise it won't hurt it. Get it very light. Blend out those lines a little. All right. Clean up my mess. Okay. about that I didn't realize you guys were so far up there give a nice little mist okay we're gonna get our little card in there as straight as we can and we're going to stamp away don't drop it Here we go, here we go. Oh, it didn't. Hmm. The texture of the paper is a little bit different than regular white smooth cardstock. I'm not completely sad by it. It's still very pretty. You know what? I do, I do want my my design to pop out a little bit more. Okay. So let's see. Um, I have this one. Let's see how it would look if we actually stamped again, right over the top of it, but with a lined, a lined look. Let's see what traffic cone would look like with this. When it doesn't turn out quite the way you want it, you know, play around, see what's going to work for you. I mean, it's not terrible. I, I tell you, it's not terrible, but it's not exactly what I wanted. And that's just because this yellow paper does have a texture to it, so it's a little bit different. But that's okay. We'll see how it looks with lines over the top. Oh, and we really lose that center, but I can mask that off. I do like that it shines through a little bit. And now I'm wondering, oh, ooh, you guys, what if we put this on, but with clear like a clear embossing. Oh, and see, and this isn't even wasted because <laughs> look how gorgeous that is. Oh my goodness. This stamp is sketched bouquet, bouquet, however you would like to say it. Sketch bouquet. 
and that is at the Crescent Creation Shop. Okay, I'm gonna clean this really good. I think we're gonna emboss it. Cause then having that embossed through the center might be really pretty. A nice clear embossing, you guys. Okay, so to do embossing, we need to get these and these. And we're going to powder up our paper. Okay, we'll pop off the extras. We're going to Versa mark lots and lots and lots because we're going to do this one shot because I don't feel like putting it in my Misty. We're just going to ink this little gem right up. See a gloss on my stamp. You see that? See that nice, beautiful gloss? Okay. Hopefully, that is enough. And we're going to go ahead and take this and lay it right down. And I always hold it at an angle, either the side or the bottom, and let that fall. But of course, I didn't do it center, so. Pardon me while I add more ink right there. There we go. Okay. So we're going to do that. And I did pull out my powders. Let that sit there a second. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Because I pulled it out and lost it. Because I didn't put it away from the last time I used it. There we go. No, that is clear. Yes, clear. That is what we want. Clear. Hope that makes a nice connection. Set that over there. Get this wiped up real quick. Ooh, you guys. I think that's going to be so pretty. Our, our little boo-boo. Okay, even though it looks really nice, our little boo-boo, you know, we want... We wanted more definition, and we lost it a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to put this powder right in the center. And then I'm going to tip it one direction. Uh, right there. Okay, and then we're going to put that powder right back in the center. And then we're going to tip it down the other direction. There we go. Mm. I think we did a pretty good job of getting the dust on there so that it wouldn't stick just anywhere. And this card is got a few steps but once you get it down to your perfection okay the first part you know trial and error we did the stamping we didn't like it we tried something else when we tried something else we thought of something else once you get all your steps squared away okay then it it's going to be easier each each card after this is going to be easier i can do my stamping go back through, do all of my embossing, and then add all of my embellishments. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and heat it up.
<laughs> it's pretty. Oh my goodness. Look at all of that. And it definitely highlighted it down here a little bit more. Um, if this were a smooth yellow cardstock, um, I may not have done the embossing over it only because the flowers would have shown up a lot better. But uh, it is pretty. Let me tell you, that is some pretty, pretty. Hello, Deborah. Oh, she had popcorn fingers. Couldn't it be typing? Absolutely. Look at that. Ugh. And if your colors aren't popping as much as you like, you can go right in and go over the top. And then wipe your, um, ooh, look at that, wipe that uh, ink off. Let's go around the edges with a little bit of red, just to liven that up a little. At that just adds more texture and depth and we're gonna go right in there and just wipe that off Ooh wee look at that got a little bit in there I got a little too carried away right there hopefully the rabbit will color cover that just gotta love that let's go ahead and clean our mess real quick this is a good fair amount of ink right there so we're just gonna blot that up. Ooh, I like that one. Been doing some good smooshings lately. I don't know what it is, but I like that one. Look at that one. Susan, hello, hello. How are you doing? Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so we need to color our bunnies and our skunk. We need to get them chopped out and put into the center of our heart. And, oh, you know what would be a cute saying with this? We could say, it's no secret, you have my heart, or something to that effect. Or, it's no secret, and then they open it up, you're a rock star, or you're lovable, or something like that super cute skunk 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 let's do oh that's a gray green we don't want gray green oops let's do black and gray i'm going to use gray for the highlights and that is almost too dark and that's another gray green Koala gray. Ooh, I like koala gray. Switching. I got the dropsies. And then fog gray. Okay. So we're going to do dark on the left. And then we're going to do some highlights. Like maybe... The light is going to shine right in this area. And then. Oh, I did it again. I keep messing. <laughs> I keep messing up my skunk. Wait, no. Black, white, black. Yeah, see, I messed it up. That's okay. <sighs> that happens. Uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of finish this as if maybe it is the shadow for the white area. And then we're going to get our clear blender or colorless blender. I don't know why they call it a blender, but it's just alcohol. And what I'm going to do is... Try and soften up that line I made. It's a little squeaky. 
kind of drag that color down. Because that's our white area. <laughs> so we're going to use that same light gray. And we're going to do the left side of this white area. And then the left side of this area here. And then under the nose. Maybe right there. A little shadow from that. And then try and blend that out. Jeez, this one is like the squeakiest. <laughs> Susan says, no YouTube notify. I was just watching... Um, EC, I'm, uh, I think that was just a little typo, ECR's video from yesterday to find out this was on now. Yeah, notifications between Facebook, YouTube, oh my goodness. Okay, they just, they have issues. So yeah, just use your, if you're supposed to be in a white space, <laughs> have some white <laughs> go ahead and use that colorless it's a little bit of alcohol if this runs out just get a, the highest strength alcohol you can find and kind of put some drops in there okay i do have a 99 percent. i got it at the hardware store so i got a big jug of it but i also use it for other crafts and stuff so um you can see if maybe your local drugstore has a high percent of alcohol or if you have a friend that does garage stuff they might have some 99 percent alcohol ask around but uh yeah deborah says elizabeth is doing stuff on the fly and she'll have a completed card myself on the other hand can't even complete a birthday card I, I feel that too, because there's some days where it's like, ugh, and then other days it's like, bam, bam, bam. Okay, so we got our colorless. Now we gotta, <laughs> gotta take a moment here and find the rest of the white areas. So we're doing white, black, white, black, and then white. Okay, and then... Um, I think we're going to do little hearts on the pads of the tootsies right there. And then black, white. So this is going to be white. And this part here. Okay. Okay. I think that's, I think that's all the white areas. Oops, wrong end. Thank you, Shay. My easy tips. <laughs> Cause I'm a <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm a lazy crafter. I'm like, I want it done today. I want it done uh, as quickly as possible so I can move on to the next and I'm really sorry about the squeaky of this pen. It and I'm not even pushing that hard. But there it is. And I'm just going to hit the, even though I'm not blending out the feet, I just want to add this colorless blender because it is bleaching the color a little bit and it changing its tonal value. So I just kind of want it to look like it makes sense that the feet are the right color. There we go. Look at that. And then use that colorless blender all over. Even though it might dry clear, make sure you saturate all the area just in case we're dragging around some color. We don't want some weird white patch in there. Oh, look at his little belly and stuff. It's so cute. <laughs> Shay says, now I know how to color my white areas. Yeah, yeah. 
if it's like an ice cube or something, you're going to want to go with your lightest, lightest blue or a blue purple combo to make it feel cold. But yeah, depending on the, the white area, um, you can highlight it with pretty much anything that's around it, you know, cause white kind of picks up the colors. So a black skunk with a gray highlights in the white area. If it was a purple skunk, I might do like pink highlights in the white areas, a very, very light pink, you know, just something different. Okay. Wait, no, we're done with this one. Okay. So now black is black. It don't have a highlight. Or a deeper shade you know because when we do when we do blending right we have a light color and a darker color to make the shadow gray doesn't or black doesn't have a shadow so we're kind of doing an opposite instead of doing shadows for black I like to do like a highlight for black so my highlight is going to be this particular gray since I messed up my color choices. <laughs> now the shadow is on the left. See, I did everything on the left. So my highlight is going to, we're going to try and do that on the right side. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We'll, we'll try. I mean, it's all we can do. It's all we can do the right or the tops because if the light was hitting it would be hitting the tops of the ears maybe the tops of this right here the top of the paw like so and then maybe the sides more so than that Maybe a little bit around here. And then the tip of the tail. Oh, I thought I messed up, guys. <laughs> so, and it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just guesstimating because um, we... we <laughs> We, we just guesstimating because we don't know, well, I don't know the scientifics of um, colors and all that stuff. Okay, so what I did is I added the black very close to my gray line. And I know you guys can't see very well. So now I'm going to take my gray and blend on the black gray line. Okay, and then just kind of blend them together so they get a little bit of shadow and that's probably not a very good area to show you okay i'm gonna start away from my blending area okay i'm gonna start right here so it's not a big line when i start adding more color i'm gonna start down here and work my way up Yeah, if you want your shadow to have a light, dark, and um, a light, medium, and dark area, what you're wanting going to do is make sure your shadow is not black. You're going to go to a really deep gray. Okay, so now we've got that blender line right there. Okay, so since black is so dark, okay, I didn't quite connect the two right there. We're going to let the light gray do that. And I'm going to start in the black and swirl outward. Okay, just kind of swirl it outward. So that we don't have that harsh line. And then I'm going to clean my brush because that's kind of a big area. And then go right into that gray again. There we go. And so now we have this, you can kind of see it, you can really see it in li real life, but there's the light gray and the black. Gloria, hello, hello. 
Elizabeth, did you say you used the darkest gray? No, this is not the darkest gray. Because a dark, dark gray next to black will almost be invisible. Um, you're going to want to pick a dark gray, but a gray that's not so close to the black. And brown, a brown gray would be a good one. Um, I do have, well, this particular one, dark chocolate. Let me grab just a little piece of scrap paper here. Okay. So like dark chocolate. Let me get a big. It's almost black. It's really dark. And I've done my skunks this dark brown color before. Okay. So that when I put the black next to it, it actually looks like shadow. Okay. Or you can get a, nope, that one's green. You got to watch some of these grays. They have a little bit of tint to them. Lava gray. Here's the other one. Because this one is, I think, my darkest gray. And it almost looks black. So you just kind of want to make wise decisions in real life there is a difference between the two if i wanted something black with a shadow i would probably color it lava or that dark dark brown and then do my shadows with the black but if you're wanting to do a highlight and your black is your black then you're gonna go less on the gray like i'm doing here i'm using a little bit lighter I'll put that one away <laughs> make sure I get the colors I'm not using out of there so I'm going to use my highlighter color as that so you just take your pins out this is what I do I take a little scrap of paper and I scribble and I scribble to see what I'm going to like Cause I don't have a pin chart. I just pick them out. <laughs> I just pick the colors out and be like, okay, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So we're going to come to this and we're going to do the same thing. Ooh, my black is running out again. And I say again, because, um, I store my pens on their side and somebody recommended to stand them upright. And that actually helped quite a bit. So if you store your pins on their side and they start to run out, go ahead and tip them up. Oops, forgot this little ear here. Put that down. And then do that. Do that. Clean my here we go okay let me get this little speckle right here and right here goodness it's black I just make it look like I did it on purpose <laughs> ran into his belly a little bit that's all right Such a tiny area. Okay, now to blendy time. Get to 
areas. Ooh, it's looking good. All right. One little skunky. All done. Look at him. All right. Let's put the little cap on that and let's color up a little tan colored bunny. colors I pulled out there if they're gonna go together and no thank you on that one I do kind of want it a gingery bunny oh I like that one okay so let's do left side shadow and a nice moon shape And since this is such a darker color than this one, I'm going to go right into the blending to soften that line before it dries. And, and just run it over everything. Okay, not just the edge. You get work that edge and then work it back into the color. Ooh, this one's a squeaker too. Grab the big end and fill it in faster. Feels like all my colors are running low. This one's giving me some fits too. Okay, let's get this side done. So we're gonna pop that shadow right there and right here. Blend, 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 blend before it dries. And if you're finding it, it's not blending good, just add a little bit more ink to help the blender out. There we go. That's looking better. Some ink pens or alcohol markers, whatever you want to call them, they do blend a lot easier and you're not going to work this hard. But, you know, you work with what you got. Arteza is what I could afford. It's decent. Um, I really can't compare it to anything else except my Spectrum Noirs, which they're not my favorite by any means. I hardly use them, but uh, yeah, they are what they are, right? Fill this in. And no straight lines. 
Okay, the rabbit is not straight. We don't need straight lines in our rabbit coloring. Circular or archy to follow the line, the lines that are there. Got you. Okay, I missed a spot, so I just went back in and give it a little bit of there we go. Ooh, almost forgot. We got some ears to color in. <laughs> There we go. And then we're going to do white. A little white cotton tail. So we're going to go with a light. Why? Why, why, why? I want a lighter gray color. Cloudy gray, maybe? What does that one look like? No, that one's kind of blue. I want kind of blue. Clear water. Oh, that's a nice little gray. So I'm just going to put like little dots in the tail. Kind of, kind of a, a dotty tail. You guys can't really see it, but that's okay. And then down the right side or left side, down the left side. And then a little bit of our colorless blender to blend everybody out. Because this is a white area. We're going to got some white parts. Here we go. One peachy pink nose. For that one. Little bit of peachy in the toesies. Here we go. What time is it? It is 3.57 p.m. Eastern. Dawn, hello, hello. Oh, look it. How lovely is that? Okay, let's do some choppy chocks. Oh, I love these rabbits. And we're not doing too bad. We did a couple of stampings because, you know, our first one didn't turn out 100% successful. So we had to stamp over the top of it to get a little bit more of what we wanted. Um, and then we've done our coloring. We're doing our chopping right now. And then all we got to do is as soon as this is cut out, we just glue it down and our card will be so ready to go. And don't try to be a perfectionist when you're trimming. If you get too close in one area, it's okay. If you get too far away, you can take out a little bit more. If you have the infamous scan and cut, ha, 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 you can do that. You can print and scan these out. Um, you could, since these are digital stamps, you could probably send them to your Cricut and do them as a print and cut feature. So lots of options. If you're not one for fussy cutting, maybe you print a whole bunch and then have your machine cut them. And then all you gotta do is color them. Okay. Maybe, um, <laughs> look at, look at how cute. Oh, 
I even like that even better down here so we see that heart even more. Oh my goodness. Oh. So that that needs to be popped up. They need they need to stand out on the page. Let's go ahead and pop that up. We don't need a ton we just need just enough to get these let me cut this in half these little ears standing up there we go let's put that a little too close a little too close to the tip i don't know what i'm doing Quit sticking it out. There we go. They, yes, they be telling secrets. Okay. Like I was saying, you could put on the, the card, it's no secret that. And then on the inside, put a little something, something. Yes, Crescent Creation does have non-digital, well, not their brand. They sell other companies. Their their brand is just the digital stamps. But if you're looking, um, if you're not a digital person and you want something um, similar, you can definitely pick up these sketched blossoms. And da, 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 they carry Sunny Studios, Bunnyville. Okay. And this one's got some cute ones where they're kind of leaning in. So this one could be telling that one a secret. Okay, so Bunnyville, these are the bunnies that it comes with. They're super cute. And I did make a card with these guys. Let me see if I can. I, I know I didn't put it away, but it may be lost in my pile of all my stuff. because I've been a slacker and I haven't put nothing away. Okay, so we did, <laughs> we did, we used Sketch to Blossom on this card too. Okay, but see, I did a much better stamping job and this is the Accent Opaque, so it's very smooth. Whereas we use the Crescent Creation cardstock, and though it's not smooth, it still it still looks pretty darn good, I think. Okay, so there's the sketch blossom again with the stamping foam, both at Crescent Creation. This one is with their digital, and this is with the Bunnyville. I really want this stamp since you first the um, sketched bouquet for the Bunnyville <laughs> or this one yeah the yeah the critters the stinking cute and the Easter set pretty much all of the critters that they draw in their kits I love it because you can mix and match them um, I do keep a file. Let me pull my file for you. So if I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. You know, I can thumb through all of my uh, stamps back there. But you can't thumb through your computer as easily. You're like, what's that one? What's that one? So what I do is I print out the stamp just the way it is in when you buy it. So this set comes just like that. And I can flip through it and I can see, this one was a fun one, you know, the Let's Ride. We could, oh, we could totally put the bicycle and one of these little cuties on this card design, you know, for all those bike riders. And then just change up the stamp here, maybe 
um, a different kind of flower or some funky design. It doesn't have to be anything specific. And then in my file, everything I've printed, okay, I've put two de designs there. I've got all my extras in here. So if I need to make a party bus, again, I can just pull it out and make my party bus. Okay. So I've got my leftovers here, which should be at the front of the pack. <laughs> Put those at the front. And then as I'm going through, I can say, oh, I have, oh, see, that's another one that should be at the front. I just print them and they're ready to go. But there we go. So there's the Easter set. See, all so many. One, two, three, four, five, six bunnies for the Easter set. And there's the little whisperer right there. Here's the stinking cute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven here because this is the back to that. So on your card, you could put this on the front and this on the inside. Okay. So yeah, there's seven of those. Some sentiments. If you use your toner laser printers, laser printers with toner, you can foil these. Oh, this one here. Um, I don't know if Crescent Creation has, no, she doesn't, not yet. Um, but Simon Hurley has a, um, a hot air balloon too. I want to use them together because I think they're going to be so cute together. His hot air balloon because it's, you know, it's a standard size and I can stamp it right over the top of this and then put some critters, put his critter in his basket and Crescent Creation in their basket. The bears, the bears are so cute too, but I can just flip through and say, oh, I want to use this particular animal. I want to put them outside. Yes, this is at Crescent Creation. This is the mountain builder. So you can put a bike in front of there doing all that fun stuff. Ooh, I haven't used the squirrel yet. I might have to use that one next. The little party one, the camper where that little bear came from. Christmas, all sorts of goodies. If you check out Crescent Creation and the other fun thing too is you can make coloring pages. So if you're bored, you can just build a big old color page and print it out for yourself. The little Christmas ones, you guys will be seeing more of these. This Christmas, they were a lot of fun. The baking, I printed a couple of those. <laughs> I was having printer issues. And then the little gingies, little gingerbread. And then the elf and the doodad. So they've got quite a bit. Okay. So let me put those away. Bragging about the digital images. <laughs> yeah, when I find something I like, like Simon Hurley and Crescent Creation, I just, I just want it all, right? You're like, oh, I can't get enough. Can't get enough. And Crescent Creation is getting in their Simon Hurley's newest goodies. I am patiently, impatiently, patiently waiting. <laughs> She's waiting on the delivery and then she'll be able to add it to her store. So, um, yeah, Simon Hurley's got some new fun stuff coming out that will be in Crescent Creation shop as soon as it gets there. <laughs> all right oh yes um i need to get off my duff and i will be making a video on how to alter these with um there are going to be separate videos so a video using like a word processor something like word or office well i'll be using office libre but the, the mechanics are very similar and then um I'm also gonna download, I think Ink Escape is another one a lot of people are using because it's a free open software. And I'm gonna I'm gonna work on it and see how that looks. But I use Illustrator, so that it costs me money, but I love how it works. But I will do a video on how to 
crop and stack and make them super cute for your projects. So keep a lookout for that. Um, I will be doing a video here and on my channel using strictly the Crescent Creation digitals here on Crescent Creation and then um, another one on my channel using another brand just so you know that it can be done with any brand <laughs> of digital stamp. Alrighty, so doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah, so because Deborah says so many cool images, but I don't know how to alter them. We'll, we'll get a video out there for you guys so you can know and follow along, hopefully. Alrighty, so thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I really had fun. Even though we we didn't get what we wanted, okay, so we had stamped it, didn't get exactly what we wanted, so we stamped over it. It's still, you can still see the heart shape in there. Um, I'm half tempted to, to cut that out. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it's, it's good for another base. That sketched bouquet is such a beautiful stamp. In Crescent Creation does have one handy if somebody would like to stop in and pick it up. Do, 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 do. Alrighty, well, I hope you have a wonderful day. And Gloria and Deborah, if you guys are not on, are not Facebook friends, I could set you guys up on a personal chat if you would like to continue chatting about that. <laughs> so um let me know send me a pm and um i can do a little private room and then leave the room for you guys okay well yeah Alrighty. i will chat with you all later thanks so much have a good day everyone